Hey everybody, welcome to another Clean Mesh tutorial. And if you wonder why I'm holding my microphone, sometimes in the intro, for some reason, I just I, I can't hear it very good. So for at least for the intro, I'm just gonna keep this thing right here. So quick tips on IA scatter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the end panel out and we're gonna take a plane. We're going to put a wind animation on it in like one, two clicks, tops. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I know it's probably throwing you off because I'm looking at my screen instead of the camera. So we're gonna do like a couple things. I'm going to show you a tip on how to um, weight paint just a little bit better and why sometimes it doesn't work when you're doing it. And then I'm gonna show you how to do wind animations. I think IA Scatter is really cool. So check out the link below and hit that like and that subscribe. And for my viewers, yes, I'm gonna do plenty more PBR texturing videos for Philogix PBR Painter Pro. And yes, there are two versions. One has brushes and one does not. And both of them are very useful. It just depends on what you wanna do. You can doubt if you were to purchase the add-on, you can just go ahead and download any of his versions. You know what I mean? And all of his updates are free and the guy's a tremendous programmer. So support the Blender market and hit that like and subscribe. Did I say that already? All right, let's get started. All right, so personally, I don't think this would be like the best tutorial unless I actually had some stuff worth mentioning. So what you could do, um, a bunch of ways to scatter geometry nodes will do that for you. Um, you can do that free, but in order to kind of like get the wind animations and the other things you need to do, IA Scatter will get you there. There are some other like node presets and things like that you can, I guess you can buy. Um, but just knowing how to use some actual software that's really versatile is going to help you out a lot. So all I did here was just shift A, drop in a plane. I dropped in my plane and then I click the IA scatter button. And what that does is it's going to apply IA scatter geometry to this. And what you see here is kind of like distribute points on faces. And what you'll need to do is, I mean, you could kind of leave it that way if you wanted to, but what I'll do is just kind of bring the mouse cursor over here and I'll get rid of that for now. So there's plenty of room. You can see what I'm doing. All I want to do is just a quick example. So shift A, drop in, oh, let's see, let's drop in a cube, kind of big. So I'm gonna hit S and scale it down and I'm gonna scale it to something kind of small and I'll just zoom in on that. Shift, uh, not shift A, control A, apply that scale. And I'm gonna get something about the same size, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in a UV sphere. I think we can kind of work with that. And if you don't get your scale to work right, just throw your mouse up in one of the corners and then bring it in nice and slow. And that's about the same size, and I will apply that scale. Now I'm gonna do one more um, shape, but I'm not gonna do it yet. So first, just select everything, tap M. You're gonna want this in a collection. So I'm gonna name this new collection as instances. Just uh, hit enter a couple times. Now up here in instances, um, I could, you know, like in the old um, the geometry nodes, why well, you could just drag and drop it into the geometry nodes and instance it, but you don't have to do that. So we have a lot of options here. And if you want to know how you do this and very quickly to change this into this, well, wait, that didn't work. Oh yeah, use collection, there you go. So that's all you have to do. It already has a box dedicated to that. And now you can actually scatter these. Uh, it's got a seed, you can populate it differently. You've got a max and a minimum and you can populate this and it works pretty much exactly like the geometry nodes, only it's right here. So then if your scene gets a little too heavy and say you put in like 5,000 of these by accident and you're like, whoa, okay, it didn't crash. All you gotta do is click, not realize instances, that'll definitely crash it. You have to do lower. So right here, let me zoom in, you can see what I'm doing. And that is lower viewport density. So if I do that, it still has that many as it would render out, but that would uh, lower the viewport density. And from here, you could say, throw something else into this instance. 
So I'm gonna just highlight this, bring the mouse over here, and I'm gonna drop in the Icosphere, and then boom, you're like, whoa, what happened? Well, it didn't scale it, right? So let's bring it down a little bit, and then apply that scale. And if you don't like that, you can do it a few more times until you get it where you want it, and just apply the scale. And now maybe that's exactly what you were looking for. Now, real quick, if you wanted to distribute this with weight, well, guess what? We can do that too. Use weight for distribution, boom, everything's gone. So, okay, let's hit control tab because I know that brings us to weight paint. And you try to click and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't add anything. Well, you can if you're in the corner. And that would actually give you a gradient style. Um, so you can control Z, practice that on the corners and just tap it one time and it almost gives you a gradient. So you can kind of do that a couple times. And that's actually pretty useful. So you don't always have to have your mesh subdivided, but you really kind of do. So what we'll do is we'll just control Z a couple times, hit tab, and I'll hit control R over here in the workspace. Once it decides to free up, control R. There we go, it's hiding. So you gotta play with that sometimes. And I can add just like one loop cut if I wanted to and then paint, but I'm actually going to just hit W and hit subdivide. And now it's not working. And I just go back. I stop playing with this thing. So W and subdivide, and now you can hit shift R, 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 a couple times, R. And then if you jump out, and now if you wait paint, it gets a little bit more detailed. So the more geometry you add to this, the more detail you can have, because it's really just gonna paint on the lines and the vertices is not going to paint on an open face like i said unless you just go to the corner oh and it's not even going to do that now because i've got more geometry so anyways there's two ways of doing that now real quick i'm just going to jump in to get all that stuff out of there do a like a blade of grass so let's model a blade of grass real quick i'll just grab the top view right here and Let's go here, shift A, drop in a plane, and I'm gonna scale it down, probably like that. And now, actually, I'll just hit the forward slash, so that way it's the only thing I'm modeling. Good low stress scene. Uh, I'm gonna jump into edit mode and go to vertex. So what I'll do is I'll just hit W, and I'm going to, actually, no, let's not do that. Control R, and I'll just add one loop cut here. And then control R and add three. That seems pretty good. And now what you can do in top view is kind of drag this one vertice with G kind of up like that. And we can grab these and hit G. And I guess you could just hit Y and bring it on the axis if you want to make it a little bit nicer. And now I'll grab this one and this one Looks a little bit more like a leaf than a blade of grass. We'll see what it ends up looking <laughs> like when I'm done. Something like that. Some vertice practice for you. All right, so basically that's a leaf. But anyways, I'm gonna grab the line and then I'll zoom in here and I'm gonna hit Shift Alt and grab that line and then kind of move around and hit G and Z and bring that down. So anyways, it's a leaf. No big deal, doesn't have to be too crazy. So what I will do is come over here and I'm going to add a material. Jump into the shading tab real quick. And I've still got that selected so I can hit forward slash over here as well. And let's use Blender to modify this a little bit, right? So I'm thinking that we can pull out the normal and put in a BUMP bump. And that was spacebar I used to do that. So we'll move that over, join this area. That's so annoying. Do we use these? I don't use those. Anyways, I'm going to take the height and left click, drop that, and I'm gonna type in noise. And I'm gonna do that for factor. And I am automatically in material preview, so that kind of works. Now we've got a little bit of noise. You can kind of move this around if you wish. And I think what I'll do is I'll just drag this base color out and maybe put a, a ramp in here. 
nice little color ramp. We'll go ahead and change this to a nice deep green. And then I can grab the other color, if it'll let me, and make this into a nice bright green. And now we've got these two. Come back. I almost had that. We're looking good. Okay, so here we go. Starting to look like a blade of grass, sort of. Anyways, I'm going to go from linear to ease. And then I'm going to drop this little menu down right here. And I'm going to do this from distribute stops from left. And that's going to give me a lot more control and give me just a little bit of a bump. Well, it's going to accentuate the bump a little bit is what that's going to do. And I usually go with 10 for my scale on something like this. And you can kind of distort it if you want, bring it back, you can play with this any way you wish. Now I'm going to drop this vector out from the uh, noise texture and I'm going to type COOR. Do we not get texture coordinate anymore? Oh, there it is, texture coordinate. Okay, so I'm actually going to chop that off. Oh, wait, I didn't use the node wrangler for that. Control right slash. Now I'm going to grab object and plug that into vector. It did wonders, look at that pattern, it's so cool. I love that. Anyways, now you can play around with some of this stuff. You could even drop a mapping node right here if you wanted to. And I think you could even drop object into factor. Let's see what I do there. Doesn't crash blender, hopefully. Ooh, look at that, some depth. Okay, so we got this high class, low, low poly blade of grass. And now what I wanna do is bring this over here and put a wind modifier on it. So I'm just gonna like rotate this thing. I think Y would be good, no, X. And then I'll hit 90 for the number pad, I hit enter. And that's kind of big, but it works pretty good. So I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit and then scale it on the Z. Get that uh, leaf grass working for us, control S. Oh, that would save. Okay, let's try that again. Control A to scale all these S's and A's. And apparently um, I changed the texture when I did that. You may not wanna do that, but no big deal. So now I'm going to jump back over to geometry nodes and I can forward slash out of that. Now the editor is going to pop back up where you have the geometry nodes on the plane. So all you really have to do is just kind of like right click it here or right click the plane up here if it disappears on you. And if I was going to put like multiple objects in here for the wind modifier, then I could just make a collection for that and I'll just put wind on this one. And so now with that, what I can do is go back up and X that out for instances and I'll go to wind. And so now I need these to appear on here. And it's important to know what you have and haven't done in the node. So I need to uncheck use weight for distribution if that's not what I want. And now all these are kind of like rotated in a weird way. All right, so everything starts off like that. Doesn't look too good. So what I want to do is go to the rotation and I'll just type in 90, get everything to stand up. Now you can choose to leave it that way or you can go back and use weight for distribution again and then control tab, weight paint. You can start painting things in here. Then obviously that doesn't look too good. So I would go in and do something like the rotation on the random. So random rotation max, kind of turn these all different ways you can twist them and they do look like they clip a little bit but if you don't want any clipping you can come up here to the distance minimum and put in something like 0 0.005 not slash 0 0.005 and then kind of gently tick it up from there because it's gonna not show too much in the viewport then you have to really kind of pump up the uh, density at that point maybe like 3,000, probably more like 10,000. Anyways, you get the idea and you can start painting these things in there. I don't need my distance to be that much. And I think I'll go back to like 500. And that's pretty good right there. That's enough. So I'm gonna go back to object mode. And I think we could see this in Eevee and see our wonderful grass. And now all you have to do 
is scoot down to the bottom of the node and you've got a pause wind, wind speed, scale strength offset, wind two speed, so you can have this going more than one way. And then you have simple wind, you can just turn this on. And what you'll have to do is get a nice little horizontal split going. And then you can pull up a timeline and you just hit play. And the wind will pick up once we turn on the uh, wind strength. I'll go ahead and turn that on a little bit and it's just gonna play like that but there's a ton of modifications you can change the scale like I said the offset how it looks um, you can increase the wind speed make something kind of look crazy way way down and have it kind of swaying it looks pretty cool I think just for this I'll put 500 in there and let that kind of play out while I'm doing it then the wind direction you can change the degrees and you can see everything's kind of changing and now we can actually add an offset as well and it's not a hundred percent noticeable but you can see what's happening so control tab I'll go weight paint I'm gonna get some more density going here so you can really populate this thing and make it look good go back to object looks kind of good um, Let's see, you can mess with that a little bit. So it's very modifiable and that offset, like when it starts over, you can see it's going from like one position to another. And then we can turn the speed down even more. And so it's just slightly animated. This doesn't take a lot of memory up as you can see, it's doing pretty good, even though it's EV engine. And so I will bring the density up to like 3000. And now you can see how well that's actually working. Um, I would probably need some different blades of grass, but I think I got enough there so you can kind of like get a good idea. Anyways, I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to go through this and the Philogix PBR painter like probably for like the next month at least until I've like burned everybody out and they're not liking my videos anymore. So really appreciate you guys watching. IA Scatter, there'll be a link below if you want to grab that. Um, like I said, I got a lot of tutorials coming out on this and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. 